Welcome back. It's another Monday and another Monday Morning Mojo. I'm your friend, Anna Gibbs, and I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining me every week. It is really, for me, the highlight of my week when we can start off thinking about ways to play a bigger game, do what we do faster, easier, smarter, trying to figure out a little bit more about ourselves, figure out how to win at whatever it is that we're doing. Or maybe we just get together because it's a space where we can have the real conversations that allow us to feel supported, feel heard. Whatever has brought you here, I am so glad to see you and have you here. And I'm glad that you could make some time for yourself because if you're listening to this podcast, you are ready to learn something that you can apply in your life, in your business that will truly move you forward. And that is what I want to talk to you about today because we're going to really unpack a uh, principle that we have shared many times at Keller Williams. And this is not unique to Keller Williams or even real estate. This is truly a conversation around how to break through when you're feeling stuck, when you're feeling like you're hitting your head on a ceiling and allow you to take a look at what it might take to break through to your next level of productivity. So regardless of the industry you're in, whether you own your own business or not, you're going to get a lot out of this conversation because we all experience this from time to time. And as a coach, I have worked through this model with a lot of people to help them really take a look at patterns and understand what needs to change in order for them to break through. And so what we're unpacking today is something called moving from E to P. Moving from E to P. So the E represents entrepreneurial, which really is code for doing things that come natural. Because when you think about an entrepreneurial style, when you think about what a lot of us would associate with entrepreneurism, some terms probably come to mind rather quickly, like independence, freedom, being a driver, right? So if you were to consider all the things that you're naturally good at, again, no matter what business or industry you're in, what are some of the things that you're naturally good at? Is it that you're a people person? Is it that you are really someone who knows how to connect with other people? Are you a natural leader? Are you an individual who is really great at sales, customer service, hospitality? You're really comfortable with numbers, right? What are the things that you just naturally migrate to? So those natural abilities are going to serve you and help you to succeed for a little while until they don't, until they're just not enough. And so what happens after a short while is if we only rely on our natural ability, we will see success and we will be able to implement those tools to attract opportunity, attract clients, for us to be able to navigate situations. But at some point, we will need to become more purposeful, which is the P in this model, and we will need to apply some focus And we will need to apply a more strategic approach in order for us to really move through to the next level. And that's a term we hear all the time in business, right? Let's take my business to the next level. We're going to take our sales to the next level. We're going to look at how to scale our business to the next level. And of course, we all want to see growth because growth is what we're here for. If we're in business, we want to see that growth opportunity, yet In order for us to sustain that growth, we have to be willing to look at ways to do things a little bit differently. And we have to be able to apply purpose and focus in order to move to the next level. So that entrepreneurial style that you have, again, it's amazing because it is going to represent so many of the things that make you uniquely you. And again, it can be our personality, our drive, 
It's our enthusiasm for the work that we're in. It might even be components of our natural behavior, our intuition, our spontaneity, right? All the things that got you to where you are. But the truth is that what got you here may not be enough to get you where you truly want to be. And so I wanted to share this with you today because I know someone listening right now is feeling it. Right now, someone is hitting their head on a ceiling and feeling disappointed, feeling frustrated, which of course is normal, yet it doesn't have to continue to the point where you feel like maybe you should quit or give up. And if we can recognize when this happens, if we can actually become more aware of when we're hitting our head on that ceiling, then we can become aware of when it's time to open up ourselves to a more purposeful style so that we can achieve a breakthrough. Because that's really the only way to get beyond that ceiling. It's almost like if you can picture a brick wall or a ceiling and feeling like you're up against it every time, what's going to allow you to break through has to be something with power, has to be something forceful, like a stick of dynamite, right? What we used to see in those cartoons when we were kids. So what's going to be your dynamite to break through? In becoming more purposeful, we have to realize that the first step is being learning-based. The first step is that we have to acknowledge that whatever we have currently in our toolbox, as good as it is, may not be enough to get us to where we want to be. So I guarantee you it's going to start with having to learn something new. It's going to start with having to take a look at your skill set and asking how to get deeper, how to understand more, how to master elements of what you already know so that you can put additional tools in your toolbox or sharpen the ones you already have so that through training, coaching, consulting, you can start to move forward with a new strategy. Because if you continue to do what you've always done, you will get what you've always gotten. So if we're going to acknowledge that we're hitting our head on the ceiling and that we need to break through in order to move forward and get to a higher level of productivity or business opportunities or volume or sales, you fill in the blank, then in order to be more purposeful, we have to learn something new. And then that knowledge helps us to become more purposeful in how we execute and how we do what we need to do so that we can apply more focus. We can apply more strategic options. We need to be open to looking at different systems and models, some of which might be missing currently in how we're doing things. And I will also say that another key component of becoming more purposeful is accountability. Now, I know that some people hear the word accountability and the little hairs on the back of your neck start to stand up. So I just want to hold your hand through this next part of the conversation and tell you this, that accountability is truly the secret sauce to helping you achieve success at a high level. There isn't anyone in any business, any industry, whether they're a performer, entertainer, sports figure, business entrepreneur, whatever it is, accountability has to be a part of the process. And listen, guys, I get it. I'm a very independent thinker, a very spontaneous thinker, a driver. And and I had for a long time really pushed against the accountability because I didn't understand it. And, And probably because at times I knew even subconsciously that I was not on goal. So the accountability made me feel very vulnerable, yet it's an opportunity. Accountability is truly an opportunity for you to with some support, take a look at what's working, what's not working and get on track. Because if we all agree that the goal is important, if we all agree that what we're here to set out to do means something to us, then we should welcome the accountability because the accountability as it might be uncomfortable at first, because it's going to reveal some things. It's going to reveal, as I just said, what's working and what's not working, but we have to be willing to look at that. And we have to be willing to then make some decisions about what needs to change. And true accountability is found with someone else. In other words, don't make the mistake and think that you can always hold yourself accountable. Because 
we might let ourselves off the hook once in a while. We might buy ourselves some more time in the process, or we might actually even be hard on ourselves, harder than we need to be. And we might get into some negative self-talk or we might really shut down and start to feel all kinds of feelings around why we're not hitting the goal. And a, and a good accountability partner helps you to stay neutral, helps you to stay in logic rather than emotions. And so through the conversation that the accountability partner can have with you, it's really about just examining the activities against the results, against the goals. And so I think in choosing an accountability partner, you want to choose correctly. You really want someone who can be in that space with you, who's not afraid to ask you the questions, who's not afraid to ask you what's working, what's not working, what can we do differently, and how can I support you? Those are some really simple questions to ask during an accountability session. And I think the person has to be willing to go there with you and also not berate you, right? So there's a good balance. You don't need someone who's too soft and uh, says it's okay, do it tomorrow. And you also don't want someone who is too abusive about it, who's going to be so strong in the conversation that makes you feel like you've done something wrong. So there's a good balance of that. There's space in between those two extremes. And it's just a conversation around the activities, as I said. So the accountability is huge in becoming more purposeful. And that's an important element of getting to your next level. So we're talking about moving from E to P. We're talking about recognizing when what we've been doing suddenly is not enough to get us to the results that we need. And I think this is such a timely conversation because we're all experiencing this in our businesses to some degree because the world is ever changing. And so the leadership skills that you have had your entire career may not be enough to get you to the next level of your leadership. The sales skills, the negotiation skills has really served you for a long time and helped you to be successful in your business. And yet it may not be enough. You may need to learn some new tactics. You may need to learn some new ways of communication. You may need to sharpen your ability to negotiate. You may need to look at some things around models that have worked for other people and implement that in order to break through the next level. So this is going to be a pattern that occurs from time to time in your life and in your business. Yes, I said a pattern. So in other words, as you recognize that what those natural abilities and what got you here will only sustain you for so long until you hit that ceiling of achievement. And as I said, you'll know when you hit it because the things that used to come easy suddenly don't come as easy. The things that always work suddenly don't seem to work anymore. When you look at your business, maybe you're at a plateau. When you look at what has always produced results suddenly slows down. So you'll feel that ceiling. And then, as I said, you're going to start to implement new things and you're going to need to learn new things in order to probably implement something new. You're going to take advantage of education, coaching, and consulting, and you're going to learn things and open up your mindset and your perspective to now see different models and systems that will work. You'll have a deeper level of focus. You'll apply different organizational systems. You will become more purposeful. You'll be open to accountability. Perhaps you'll even hire a coach, right? And all those things start to help you become much more laser focused and purposeful. And so now you're seeing different results and you start to move forward again until that all becomes natural to you. Yeah, that's what started this process because you learn things, you implemented them, you adapted them, you became masterful at them until they no longer were producing those results. So this E to P model is going to repeat because whatever you learn in order to become more purposeful and to become more successful and take you to that next level, at some point you master it and it becomes natural to you again. So I say this with a big smile and encouraging spirit because what 
the purpose of this message really is for us to understand that we always have a solution waiting for us. It just means we might have to be willing to do something a little different. And it also means that we might have to be willing to dip back in and really lean in to learning and acknowledging that it's a journey. It's a journey of always looking at self-development as our number one job. Whatever industry or business you're in, it starts with you because your business only grows to the extent that you do. So your number one project is always about looking here within and saying, how do I level up? How do I become a better leader? How do I become more efficient? How do I become more successful in my negotiations, in my relationships? Because that's what's going to move you forward. The path to success is never linear. And your definition of success is your own, and it will change throughout your career. Each person's journey is unique, and the road is full of twists and turns. So I just, again, wanted to share this message because I just celebrated 12 years with Keller Williams, and I've been in business, and I've been an entrepreneur for, oh my gosh, 30-something years, over 32 years. And so when I just look back, I realize that my journey in business, my journey as an entrepreneur, as a business leader, is about evolution. It's constantly changing. And it's just understanding that's part of the course. And that we always have to be open to looking at how to do things differently, how to do things with more strategy, how to do things with more clarity. And just for us to understand that the cycle of moving from E to P is there. It's always there and it's always at play. And it's about embracing the things that will help us get to that next level. So when you're thinking about whatever is challenging you right now, when you're thinking about whatever you might be struggling with in your business, ask yourself, If something that you've been relying on for a long time is suddenly not working for you, what needs to change? What needs to change so that you can stop hitting your head on the ceiling of achievement and breakthrough? So that you can also be willing to adapt and redefine your definition of success along the way too, because that's always going to change. I know today was a short message, but I think there was a lot packed into it for you. So again, we talked a lot about moving from E to P, how to break through to your next ceiling of achievement, and so that you can finish the year strong. We are really getting close to the fourth quarter, and it's time for us to take a look at what we wanted to do, what we set out to do back in January, and how we've done with our progress toward our goals And listen, it's not over yet, people. We still have a lot of time left. So what needs to happen between now and the end of the year so that you can finish strong? And I guarantee you the opportunity to become more purposeful is there for you. And so I hope this conversation has sparked some interest in examining that. And I will also say, I encourage you to reach out to someone who can help you. Reach out to someone who can help you be accountable to what it is that you need to do, but also just help you strategize it and help you figure it out. So it might be time to look at hiring a coach. If there's anything I can do to help you, I have a lot of resources and you can always reach out for some support there. So thanks again for joining me this week. It's always great to have these conversations with you. I always learn something new in the process. So I appreciate you being here. And I look forward to talking with you next time. If you found this to be helpful, definitely share it with a friend. I love that we are growing our podcast through all of you. And if you haven't already, please subscribe so that you'll know every time a new episode drops. And I really appreciate that too, because it helps me to continue this passion of mine and sharing things that are really changing people's lives. So I appreciate that. All right. I'll see you next week.